Oh yeah, ay. When you need a hand and you don't know why Just know that I'll be there When the road is long and you feel so tired All right, what's up YouTube? Hey, uh, John Raiden here, founder and CEO of e-powersport.com and uh, coming to you today, it's our Sunday coffee chat, rant, whatever you want to call it. Um, some people think I rant, some people think I chat, some people think I just ramble on like a crazy person. So either way, feel free to leave your comments down below and let me know what you think. <laughs> Always happy to hear what people think. Um, let's see here. So there's some stuff that I was actually wondering <clears throat> if I was going to have anything to talk about today. So I was like, man, it's been pretty, pretty kind of quiet and things but um, this last week. But luckily I woke up this morning and there were a few different things facing me in my feed that made me kind of wow. Uh, the first thing is I wanna just give a quick shout out to Kyle at Area 13 and say, get better brother, take it easy, take care of yourself, get yourself better. That's what's important, man. Uh, if you guys haven't seen, uh, big, big name in the community, and uh, just not doing so well. So if you would uh, send Kyle at Area 13 some uh, some well wishes and some get betters if you can. Um, also, uh, I saw an article in my feed, uh, I think it was from Ars Technica, talking about the Super 73s. And, and really it was funny because it said, it's expensive, it's heavy, and it's fun. And I thought to myself, well, there's a lot of things that you could say that about. But, um, <laughs> and so it kind of, uh, started me thinking about how our product line is set up right now and how we don't actually carry a scrambler. Um, you may have noticed that we do have the Watt Wagon scrambler, the, the uh, cross tour. Um, it's still inbound. It's not available yet, but the only reason we're even looking at carrying the, <clears throat> pardon me, the cross tour from Watt Wagons is because they tend to be a pretty premium brand about things and we expect it to be high quality and high durability. But when I say that, it's uh, the reason I say that about it is because to me, scrambler bikes don't necessarily carry those two components with them when it comes to design. Um, I, I can't see you, but raise your hand if you had one of the 1970s <laughs> <laughs> yeah, big handlebar banana seat. Mine actually had the shifter right here. Very, very cruel. Whoever came up with that, that is a horrible, horrible thing you did to people. The little shifter on the top tube. That was, oh man, oh, horrible memories on that one. But <laughs> more to the point, um, we learned those styles of bikes and the type of bike they were was that um, through rough riding and heavy riding, they don't seem to last. So the way the design is, the vibrations actually go right into the joints, into the welds, and tend to jar them apart. And then if you do any more like trick or hard riding on them, uh, we find the scrambler design doesn't necessarily hold up as well. And a lot of that has to do with the overall cage design, both underneath the top tube and along the back wheel. Um, and how that's all set up, but that's, that's a whole other thing to discuss. But that is essentially why we don't carry many scramblers, right? Um, I've talked with companies about them. I could carry the exact same bikes uh, that Super 73 has and carry them for less, and we could augment them ourselves if we wanted to as well. But I find that the design doesn't lend itself well to durability for the amount of price, for the price that you would have to pay. Um, and if you've been paying attention, you know that that's what we're all about, right? We're about making sure you get good value for the money you're paying. So I just don't see that there. So I think when I read the Ars Technica article and it went into the whole detail of the R series and this and that, and there's ZX and stuff, I, I just kept thinking to myself that they were just very overpriced, uh, not very adjustable bikes. So I don't know if you ever tried to pedal on a scrambler bike, but it's not near as comfortable using a bicycle seat. Um, so there, there's just a lot of drawbacks to those. So when we look at the price and the return, you don't really see that there, you know? And so it, we don't carry those as much. Um, I'm really, really uh, 
you know, hopeful and, and have faith in Watt Wagons and the quality that they're going to be putting out with their cross tour. Um, and that's really the only reason why we even carry it, quite honestly. I don't, I don't see Scrambler styles as being that great, all right, as far as design and overall durability. We actually carry bikes that uh, look more like electric motorcycles, and we actually carry electric motorcycles. <laughs> so, yeah, so if you want those, we can get those for you as well. Um, and they're pretty well souped up, and some of them are cheaper even. Than, as a matter of fact, one of our decked out e-enduros is less than a Super 73 with a bunch of uh, custom paint job on it. So I think one of those was 48 or 4900, and you can buy a 12 kilowatt version of a thoroughbred or Arabian or even the little burrow for less than five grand. So um, yeah, when it comes to the competitiveness, I just don't, I don't necessarily see that there. I think that um, these e-enduro products are, they're heavier, but that's good because you're going to be going faster. So that weight will help hold you on the road. Um, and it just outdoes the whole scrambler thing a million times over. So if you want one, I, you know, if you want a scrambler and stuff, that's cool. I get it. They, they look neat. Um, if you want something a little more functional, that's going to not rape your wallet and leave you sitting there going, oh, the frame broke. That really sucks. Um, uh, <laughs> buy an e-enduro, buy an electric motorcycle. Like, Buy one of our aluminum bikes. Um, the thousand watt, keep up with one of the, the, uh, the Super 73s pretty easily. Um, another thing that came through my feed this morning, which I thought was really just like, wow, I, uh, man, I just could not, I was confused. I was actually really confused. So when you think of e-bikes and you think of the names in the industry, you know, other than the regular bicycle companies like Giant, Specialized, Shrek, uh, <laughs> Trek, I'm <a> Trek. Um, <coughs> you may think of companies when you think of e-bikes like Saunders or Ariel Rider or Aventon um, or Super 73. So the thing that really got me was I got this email from Aventon talking about how they just sponsored a race car, right? And I thought, oh cool, they sponsored an EV race car. And then I get in here and it's uh, some dude's Honda that they sponsored. And I'm thinking, so you're a, you're an electric bike company. You're touting the benefits of electric bikes. And yet you're going to sponsor somebody to race a gas car. All right. Now this isn't just anybody. It's not like they just went to a racetrack and said, you, we're going to sponsor you. No, this is uh, Daniel Wu. Um, he's a well-known director, producer, he's acted in quite a few different things. Um, I wouldn't necessarily say he's an A-list actor, but you know, he's definitely well-known, definitely done some cool stuff. Um, loved you in Tomb Raider, buddy. That was pretty sweet. Um, and just a lot of different, you know, stuff there, but I, as I looked at it, I'm thinking to myself, um, doesn't this send the wrong message? Does it? I mean, you know, I'm all for supporting things and sponsoring things. But should an electric bike company be sponsoring a gas car? You have to forgive me, my daughter and her friends are celebrating her birthday in the other room uh, this early morning. So if there's a little bleed over sound, that's where it's coming from. Um, so yeah, so I thought that was really odd that, you know, there would be a electric bike company sponsoring a gas car, a gas race car. Um, we've actually looked at things like uh, setting up our own race circuits and our own uh, race uh, tournaments and systems based off of the level of bikes is actually something I've been charting out. Um, but to take the money you make from e-bikes and put it into supporting gas car racing seems really odd to me. It seems very flipped. And so to me, I, I think it's a... It, it, I get what they're going for, but it became a question of, you know, is that something that that I would do? I mean, I would definitely sponsor somebody, but I think I would sponsor somebody involved in electric. So somebody involved in electric car racing or electric bike racing. Actually, uh, somebody contacted me and we were talking. They informed me they actually do electric mountain bike races now, um, which is really cool. Uh, and, you know, there's different aspects of that where for theirs it's a lot of like the NASCAR stock car stuff where it has to be a certain setup 
Um, and what we'd actually like to do is see it be more of a open thing. So you get a lot of different styles of bikes with the same class, or in this case, we would look at the same amp setting flows, same amp flow setting uh, in the controller and make sure that they're running the same wattage as it were. Um, but beyond that, I mean, you could have a bike with more torque using less, using the same wattage, things like that. So yeah, looking at the race stuff, I think it's very interesting. Um, I would, again, be more interested in sponsoring electric vehicle races because um, some of these just are crazy. You see, we still got the watt wagons over here uh, in the shop. We've sold out of a few bikes. There's actually a lot more room in here today than there has been in the last month. And uh, this is probably one of the few we have left to, uh, to get rid of in our demos, actually. Um, we have it down at 72 with free shipping. Um, it is just a beast of an electric mountain bike. Um, that's 7200 with free shipping. And uh, yeah, it's just a, a monster. So if you're interested in the Want Wagons Hydra, let us know. It's decked out. It is an incredible bike. I highly recommend it. Um, the little burrow, uh, I've had some interesting situations with this one recently where the tires just blow because I run over nails and stuff. It's Vegas. That's how things are here. Um, so we're getting inserts. I don't know if you noticed, but if you go to the website, you go to our accessories, e-bike specific, you'll see we've started listing tires, tubes. Um, we have a, the uh, liners coming in for the, the tires. Uh, they're three and a half inch wide, so leave like a, or a little under three and a half inch wide, so leave like a gap on the edges for you to tuck it in. Um, so yeah, so that's all getting set up and we're getting things going. Um, electric motorcycles are still on pre-order, so get your orders in for those because if you wait till it gets here, guess what? It's probably gonna cost more. Um, people who pre-order get the discounts. If you wait till it hits the shore and I've already done all the QC work, I'm probably gonna charge you 500 to 1,000 more on that one. So if you're interested in these bikes, put your faith in your wallet, put your wallet in the, in the computer, <laughs> put your wallet on the order. That's what I'm saying. And uh, yeah, and order it and get them in. So, uh, so that's it. I mean, today I've been working on a lot of different stuff. We had a uh, garage sale for the neighborhood. So I put these out and had some people stop by and chatted with a bunch of people about them. Um, but other than that, just, you know, a couple little articles and went over some things and uh, yeah, safe riding. Watch out for those cars, everybody. Know that I'll be there, I'll be there, I'll be there, I'll be there, I'll be there.